Hello and welcome to Heather and Hops. My name is Kat or Catherine and I am a knitter based in Hertfordshire in the United Kingdom. This is my little space on the internet where I share my knitting. Um, I've documented from basically day one, my very first project, all the way through to now where I have released two patterns. I released my first garment pattern next week, next, last week. I don't know why that stumped me, um, but that's really exciting. My Galdana summer top has been released. I'll pop a quick picture here or here or somewhere uh, and a link down below. Um, very exciting. Um, and I share my home with Audrey, the in-house kitten. She's not a kitten anymore, but I still refer to her as that because she is very dinky. She is sat behind the camera staring at me just because I clearly I need an audience today, hey? Um, today I have a pint of tea and I am sharing a tea with Hannah from the corner of Car Craft, or at least a, that's how I like to see it. Um, it is a uh, new house blend which is, they describe it as a stronger Earl Grey. Um, and it does have bergamot oil in, which is quite nice. Um, because sometimes they don't even use bergamot when they say it's Earl Grey, so this is cool. Quite enjoying it. And this is my Vince Ray Experience tankard, which I've had for years and years and years. I have quite a lot to talk about today, so I will try not to digress or waffle too much, um, and also try not to speak too quickly, because I started five minutes ago and I was speaking at the, s the sound of light. I was talking very, very fast. Um, so yeah, up front I have a few finished objects. I have a whip and, hello you, <laughs> you sweetheart, and at the end I will share a fun thing of snail racing, a failed knitting project which will need to be replaced, and some footage of our lovely trip to Wales. We went to the Brecon Beacons at the weekend and we had a lovely time. It was a very short visit but oh, it, it was wonderful. It was really nice to be outside wonderful to be in nature, it was wonderful to experience the weather, um, it was wonderful not to see three cranes everywhere you looked or building sites and hear them so I really hope you can't hear that today I've done everything I can, I've closed all the windows possible, shut all the doors and put the curtains across so hopefully you won't hear that. But yeah, so without further ado I am wearing one of my finished objects. I'm sitting on the floor today, well, on a cushion, because I realised I've been sitting on a chair and I don't really do that. So hopefully this will help me to be even more authentic. Um, so yeah, this is my ranunculus noir, as I'm lovingly referring to it as. This is my fourth version of this, and I was going to knit it using a really special yarn to me because Alex purchased it for my birthday a few years ago um, uh, Rust Mohair which would have been perfect but when I started knitting it, it was just too bright so I want to use it for another project maybe hold it double I'm not sure yet so I need to rethink that but I started it and ripped it back I was really really looking forward to joining in with the knit along that we've been having in our discord group so we have a server where there's over 40 of us now internationally and we pop in and out as and when we want, we talk when we want to, we you know, go off into the woods when we want to and on a Monday night we have a virtual knit night that takes place even if I'm not available, other knitters will be and it's, I'm so grateful for the space and for the platform. But lots of beautiful versions of this started happening. And I really wanted to join in, but 
I wanted to make sure if I was joining in it was you know something that I was going to wear or would be a gift um, and I had been working on a for an art lover shawl and I realized that it didn't feel that nice around my neck not that this is like I'm wearing this fine but wrapped around my neck with my hair I, it just didn't feel quite right Audrey honey that's not fair um, so I actually ripped it out and decided to cast on this which I'm really pleased I did because this has already seen quite a lot of wear um, it's black so it's incredibly wearable it weighs 35 grams so if you've got you know one ball of mohair from somewhere like drops if you've got 10 grams in stash you can make a, a two color one very easily and now I, I love it I've worn like I said I've worn this a lot I did the short sleeve version I did everything else basically as pattern so I think I did the body a little bit longer and the ribbing a bit shorter which made it exactly the same length just because I was do you want to go out honey? <laughs> I've shut the door so she can't <laughs> she can't get out bless her um, the only thing I adjusted was that I used a 5mm needle instead of I believe it's a 6mm and that's because I'd hoped for a slightly smaller size this is a basically one size fits almost all pattern um, I find that the easiest way to make it fit me was to go down full needle size or two really because you do get a 5.5 but for me this this is perfect it's the right mix of oversized but you know not so big that I get it caught on everything which would be quite an issue I think but they do have a uh, Midori has a bust modification I think to make it for a larger bust and I, I love this pattern I've spoken about it quite a bit um, it's, fair, it's very clear, it's very simple we've had a few people having to rip back in the group and I think that's you know all various reasons um, but I've not struggled too much ever with this pattern I know that on um, maybe it's even on this one a couple of my eyelets are a bit off I might be on just the peach one but that doesn't bother me and I'm sure for some people it might so it's been really nice seeing people chiming in helping people figure out maybe what they need to change what they don't because there's a few different interesting texture stitches here and I yeah I really love this pattern I don't really know what else I can say about it because this is my fourth time knitting it um, yeah if you are wanting to join the discord feel free to join I'll pop a link down below um, and you'll see some quite cool versions of this there's a an orange and mohair one which is gorgeous a berry one which looks just delicious i want to eat it and wear it with my autumn trousers but i don't need another one at this point and there's a really cool um one knitted inspection fiber by may who has this just beautiful aesthetic um yeah so that is my ranunculus which i'm very happy with and must probably stop wearing it because it's going to get overworn very quickly. Um, second one. I do. I have three finished objects today. I'm not quite sure how I managed to finish it, considering I don't feel like I've done that much knitting. But I finally finished my D and D socks. So that is quite exciting, though. I will not show these again on the podcast. Uh, <laughs> if you have been watching for a while, you'll recognise these. If you haven't, these are. Vanilla socks, I think it's eight eight rounds of ribbing, knitted in Siren by Viv Sugar Yarns, which I think is stunning. Um, I really like Alison's yarn. I'm not sure what this is, um, but this is the last time I'll complain about it, because I'm going to 
use the, the last bit for something else. I'm not using it for anything to do with knitting, but I switched to a a blunter needle. I use short short circular higher highers with a sharp needle for my socks nowadays. I found after trying with various different methods, DPNs, magic loop, two at a time, this is the method that I enjoy most and I think it's really cool to be able to experience and to learn about different ways of trying it because suddenly something clicks and that works for me but for this yarn I had to use a blunter needle which seemed to help um, and I used a longer cable on the heel which I have done on my whip which I will show you that just seems to work for me um, 64 stitches these fit me but they might be for someone else they fit Alex strangely enough but then they might be for my sister who has not too dissimilar hair to me at the moment um, but she loves her Jenny socks and my auntie makes wonderful socks um, I have two pairs and I wear them a lot especially in the winter they're just sturdy lovely and well fitting but so I don't my sister's already got a pair from me that are waiting to be gifted. I don't know whether to put these in there too or not. We'll see. But yeah. So really pleased with how these came out. I haven't blocked them yet, but I have put them on blockers so that I could hold them up and not be too weird. But I, I am a nightmare with these things. I think they're hilarious. These ears and things. Anyway, gorgeous socks. Really happy with them. <laughs> happy to see that they're finished. Um, not because I didn't enjoy doing them, because I really did. Um, it meant that I was playing D&D. &D. <laughs> uh, this one. This is one of my most special projects. And unfortunately, it doesn't go with my hair at the moment. But if you've been here for a little while, you'll have seen this. If you're new, welcome to my Scotland show. So this... I'm just really happy with it. Um, I won't talk too much about the yarn, but this is Nugget by Ching Fibre. This is one of my favourite colourways at the moment. This is Lallybrock by Jess at Ginger Twist Studio in Edinburgh, and it's on her Ginger's Hand Dyed Sheepish Sock Base. This is Telespin, which is a Norwegian mohair. Um, this is really special. I have more of this, um, but I'm really saving it for something that's going to, like, something special it needs to be something that I'm gonna truly love and then these are Debbie Biss Debbie Biss? Debbie Bliss Fine, Fine Donegal I believe it's camel and chocolate or something along those lines um, yeah so these hopefully you can clearly see are thistles Alex helped me design this little motif which is sort of meant to be like a hop but could also be you know horse tree or a bush in the you know in the Cairngorms or Glencoe um, but yeah overall I'm really really happy with this I really enjoyed the construction so I was I steeped it so I knitted the main body here in the round and I steeped it and I was going to do um, more stockinette stitch along the edge but I opted for the lace um, mostly because I felt like it was I needed something that really held its heart in Scotland and this is if, if you, you might recognise it if you, um, it's Old Shale Lace which is from Shetland so it just seemed really fitting and I didn't think that having a fringing here would work but what I was going to do is pull the steek ends through as fringing really happy with how this has turned out. I'm not going to sit up and show you, like turn around, but it fits and hangs really nicely. I have written how I've made the project down. Um, I've got charts for the colour work. I'm not sure if I should write it up properly or not. I'm not sure if this is something that other people would enjoy to knit or to wear. Um, I'm really excited at my hair becoming a more normal colour so that I can wear this a bit more freely. 
Um, I really love it. It's, it's so snuggly, but because of the nature of the fabric, it's quite it's, it's drapey, and you're you're aware it's there, but it's not too heavy. But yeah, I'm really pleased. I did a just for more information. I did a little bit of a knitted eye cord on the lace too that went that was knitted as I went, which I felt like was a nice touch. Yeah, overall, really pleased with this one. It is a big, snuggly, blankety shawl. Um, yeah, I think if I was to write it up, there'd be a few adjustments just to maybe omitting, changing this section, which is just the seed and the camel but having the nugget in the middle just like I've done with these sections and then maybe evening out the gaps between the sections which mostly just because I was getting carried away with knitting is the reason that it came to turn out this way um yeah and those happy little thistles yeah I'll stop gushing about that now um So, I have one singular work in progress, and it's a happy one. Now, I finished those D&D socks when, on Sunday, when we got back from Wales, we decided that, or I decided that I wanted to get a bit cosy. We'd been in the rain quite a bit. Um, Alex wanted to look at his photos, so... I put on the holiday, snuggled into my blanket, um, and finished knitting. The other factor that played a part in uh, choosing the holiday as a, as a film and finishing my socks was that this gorgeous yarn arrived. Now my grandparents were very sweet and sent me a little bit of birthday money, and this is what I purchased. Um, it is from the Dotty Wool Company. Ooh, that's the right felt that way. <laughs> um, and it is a 80% 80 uh, 80 nylon, 80% merino, 20% nylon. I believe it's super, super wash. Um, high twist. I love high twist for socks. Um... This colour, her colourways are absolutely gorgeous. The self-striping I have never actually done. So that was the first. And oh boy is it fun. And this is where I am at. <laughs> These colours are so rich and lovely. So just, I can't, I can't I'm just gushing. Um, I believe her name's Ruth and clearly a very very talented dyer. She has a couple of other colours that I would love to purchase and knit. I don't need to purchase yarn at the moment. I'm definitely, uh, I've got yarn that I would love to swap out. But yeah, so I'm not purchasing any yarn. But if I was, I would love a few more pairs of these self-striping yarns because they are just stunning. I've done a basic vanilla sock. I've done a few more rows of ribbing than I usually do and I might do that in more in future um, and I've done my fish lips kiss garter stitch heel I used the last of my beehive yarns raven red to do that and I wasn't sure at first because it's quite a more cherry red but I think knitted up it looks quite it looks quite good I'm not sure who these are going to be for it does feel weird to purchase a birthday gift and then gift it but I quite like that too. Um, there's a chance that they'll be for Alex because these will fit him perfectly. Obviously when they're finished, not now. Um, but he does have an elf suit, like a onesie. So yeah, he has had his eye on these as I've been knitting. But they seem to be knitting themselves fairly quickly. It's Wednesday and I really haven't had time to sit and knit. 
which has been quite nice to be honest. Um, but yeah, they still seem to be kind of knitting themselves. I think the four rounds of each colour seems to go so quickly and then it is very much like just one more round, just one more stripe. But yeah, Ruth, if you are ever this this is amazing yarn. She's a very new dyer by the sounds of it. Um, yeah, gushing, gushing with joy. The Dotty Wool Company, she's amazing. And to keep it on theme with the Christmas, it is living in my cat Christmas bag, which is covered in mohair, which was made for me by the lovely Nugget, who we are very, very much hoping that soon she can appear on the podcast officially, not just glimpses. So that's really exciting. Um, what else do we have to talk about? Oh, while we're on knitting still, I just want to share these. I'm going to pick them out. Um, my wonderful friends that I used to work with at Chain Fiber when I was working there still came and visited. So I had two of the girls and then Becky, who also works there now, but I've known since before then, came to visit. And Hannah, I think I've shared her stitch markers before, but she's got a new series, so to speak, a new collection. Um, these ones are extra special. Now, she's wild and my birthday ones actually, you can see they have gold leaf on. Um, but what these stitch markers are, are just beautiful. They are, they're leather. Um, someone that's lived a mostly vegetarian life, I have a few opinions of my own on this. But these, this leather is bits that otherwise would have been unused, thrown away, and I think that's really sad. Um, and Hannah saves this leather, she hand paints it, and she makes these stitch markers. These markers are also really cool because not only are they, you know, gorgeous on their own, as a set, they sit together, so each bit is almost like a puzzle, and we, we were all gifted a set of stitch markers, including Alex, which I have here. And as 30 year olds and 30 somethings and 20 year olds, sorry about the, uh, the shuffling, um, we spent quite some time seeing if we could put our stitch markers back in order. Is that going to be? Yeah. So these are Alex's ones. He's got these almost volcano-y, volcano -y ones, which are gorgeous too. Um, I think Becky got some, some bluey green ones that look like mountains. But they are, yeah, they're, I quite like them because they are fixed. Um, I often use my gorgeous ones now by Nicole of Time Weaver, who also now does a podcast, or these tiny little bulb ones, which um, some of these were from uh, a lovely designer that I met in Norway who just gifted me them. And some of them are actually just collected from garments, so sometimes they attach tags using those little bulb safety pins. But I like these, they're fixed, they slide along needles quite nicely and they're quite, these ones are quite large so y you know that they're there and I quite like that. But, um, I think that's everything, near enough. Um, one last honourable mention is my gorgeous blanket behind me. Um, my auntie Jenny, who makes the socks, is a knitter too, and she makes blankets, and she's been making blankets for people for years, and I've always admired them. She made one for my aunt's 50th, and it, I mean, I cried at this one, but I also cried at my aunt's one. Um, but I can't believe that she spent so many hours knitting a king-sized blanket for me, and in a very beautiful natural beige. Um, it must have been hours, but I think that it works as perfectly as a little backdrop here, which I might, I might actually finally have a 
something that I stick to rather than moving around the house every week and shuffling the house every week. Um, but yeah, she also knitted my sis uh, crocheted my sister a blanket for her baby Flynn, who arrived last week. Um, in regards to knitting fails, I will insert a picture of said finished item off the foot and then said finished item on the foot. So I was going to knit my father some slippers for his birthday. Um, my family had an idea of creating a, uh, what's it called, like a granddad gift box if you will because it would be his first birthday as a granddad. Um, so I thought slippers would be perfect and I was going to knit them but not long after I decided my mum had told me that I had got a Addy professional 22 stitch uh, knitting machine for my birthday she was like have a think about it you know I can return it if it's not right I don't want it to be the wrong thing blah 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 which was really sweet and I'm not very good at gift receiving that makes me really uncomfortable not because I don't like them but because it's so wonderful that people have put effort into me and it just you know um, so I knew that was coming and I knew that I had have three days between my birthday and my dad's to maybe you know give him the first thing made on the machine unfortunately they came out like flippers or Star Wars something um, as you can see, they are not ideal. Um, nothing really to do with the machine. The machine does work. I'm not sure what I'm going to use it for. Um, wow, you can see a drone. How distracting. Great. Um, but it might be that I actually start to do blankets on them on it because I can knit a flat. And otherwise I'm not going to knit blankets. And I think that really is it now. So I'm going to insert some footage of snail racing. If you're interested in if I can race a snail. Interesting. Um, and also footage of our trip to Wales, which was really, really beautiful. Um, I'm hoping, I haven't gone through the videos yet, but I'm hoping there's some lovely shots because it really was magic. Um, on that note, I'm going to love you and leave you and see you in a different form, uh, aka snail racing and in holiday mode. Um, thank you so much for joining. Uh, like I said, if you want to join Discord, join us for chatting, knit nights, everyone's welcome. Um, yeah, I really hope you have had a good few weeks. Um, you and your loved ones are all well and healthy and I hope that you do have a lovely few weeks coming forward. I might record next week because I probably have quite a bit to say again. We'll see. Um, but if not, I'll see you in two weeks time. Um, thank you so much for joining me. Look after yourself. Look after your loved ones. Remember to send them a message to tell them you love them as frequently as you can. And tell yourself you love yourself because that's good too. Um, I hope to speak to you again very soon and take care. You ready? Alright, so. Three, two, one, go. Still nerve wracking. Can't, can't. It's like stress knitting. It's just not as speedy as the first one. Oh, we have to stop. Not yet. Mm, get, get ready.
Uh, go. <laughs> Looks like 23.8 seconds. <laughs> chase me, Archie, chase me. <laughs> <laughs> Round two, in the interest of fairness, let's try some ribbing and see if you can do that as quick as a snail. On your marks, <laughs> get set, go. Rib. We didn't decide if it was one by one or two by two. But I've gone by one by one because that's how the elephant. It was the animals that marched in two by two, not one by one, isn't it? <laughs> get, get ready to press the button. Yeah. Now. Oh, that's a bit slow on there. It's actually the same speed. It give or take twenty three seconds. It's kind of surprising. I guess that's continental, isn't it? So yeah, definitely can knit faster than a garden snail. Fun. So here's a little peek at our mill that we had. It was the first mill we've had out in, well, since the beginning of lockdown. And uh, we had a really nice time. We ate some lovely food and we had a nice walk through the park just afterwards. Happy birthday, I'm so thankful for everyone that wished me happy birthday or sent their wishes and um, to Wales. We stayed in this beautiful little off-grid um, shepherd hut and uh, yeah, safe to say we very much enjoyed our first evening. We just sat and uh, unpacked and had a bit of time to just take in the scenery and do a bit of ning. <laughs> you ready for the a bit up and down all day we did decide that we would go to Penny Fan and see if we could maybe catch a view from the top um, we didn't we never do <laughs>
like, I uh, can't decide if I like the sound of the water or the sheep. I don't know if I have a How are you feeling, Kat? And home. And a few bonus photos of Neo Wise, a comet that could be seen with the naked eye. Thank you and be well.